everyone, this is Whitney Dodds, the founder of VMS Works. Today I'm here to interview Middleborough Mocker Raves manager Tyler Ferdinand, whose team just eliminated the defending Boston Metro Baseball League champions of the 18 plus division, the Boston Havoc. Hi, Tyler, and welcome to the channel. Hi, Whitney. Thank you for having me. All right, perfect. Let's jump in and get started because uh, I know you guys have had a really busy week um, with, or busy couple weeks. Uh, I guess, <laughs> going through and defeating the Havoc. And so uh, I'm sure you've had a lot of time, well, maybe not a lot of time to reflect on it, but um, it's, I I'm sure you're still beaming from that series. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was fun. We knew, um, we knew it was going to be a battle. Um, but I think, I think the best thing for us going into that series is we did have to play the two playing games, um, which was something new to us because the last couple of years, we've, we've got the one seed, not really had to worry about it, get a bye. But I think, you know, being in that position, it kind of lit a fire under us. Um, a lot of teams were counting us out, it, it seemed like. So um, I think those first two playing games, we scored, I think it was 37 runs in the two games, definitely helped get our bats going. And then we just used it in this series against the Havoc. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the first thing that jumps out when looking at everything is that you guys outscored, I mean, you've outscored your opponents 56 to 9 this postseason, which is just insane. Um, but kind of going to the Havoc series, actually, before we go to the Havoc series, what is it like playing in that kind of, uh, those elimination, you know, you know, when, when are you go home type games before you get to the Havoc? Because obviously, if you lose, your season's over. Um, right. And so <clears throat> what kind of pressure is there on your team to do that? And how are you guys able to handle that? There's definitely a lot of pressure on us, um, especially last year we're in the championship, the year before that we won it. So there's a lot of pressure for us to get out of those games and, and get into a series. Um, really, what we told guys is, you know, it's baseball. Anything can happen in one game. We just got to go out there and play 110% every pitch, every inning, um, and, and just play, you know, we, we call it the mockery baseball. Um, we're a very gritty team. We're, we're very fiery. Um, we got great arms. We play great defense. And we swing the bat well, so we just have to stay within ourselves to get through those games and then, you know, use our momentum going forward. Yeah, and then obviously the series with the Havoc didn't get off to the start you guys wanted to. You lost a very tough one nothing game, um, which, we've, which I've covered before. Um, but being able to take that loss and then just, you know, kind of ride the momentum of your offense waking up because you guys had scored them 21-6 to six in the last three games. Um, you know, what was the key to doing that? Because obviously, you know, it is one game, but that's a mm -hmm. tough way to lose a game. And then to just be able to feel like something's clicked into place, um, especially with all the base runners you guys had, um, yeah. how, what, what was the biggest key to actually getting that series kind of to go back in your favor and close out a very tough team that obviously were the defending champs? Yeah, I think um, the biggest thing to our advantage is we played the next night. So you had to kind of have a quick memory. Less than 24 hours later, we, we were back at the ballpark ready to play a game. Um, I mean, I I think going into it, we, we had a great feeling. Um, we have a lot of arms. We've had four pitchers that we didn't even use in the playoffs yet. So um, we're, we're in a good position. And, and I think we are just, you know, trusting ourselves, knowing that we're not going to get shut out every game like we, we our bats are, are too good to do that um so and our pitchers knew that you know if, if they kept it under three runs four runs we're, we're going to be able to win that game easily um with the bats we have and i think going back at it monday getting that win um we all were kind of talking about it once we got that one win we were going to start rolling um and then that's when wednesday happened and our, our bats exploded for the 10 runs and we knew going into Sunday that we were in a really good position where we had one of our lefties on the mound. We had two of our righties who, I mean, I think, I think we have four aces, but you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to place one, two, three, four, because all four of them are just as good. They just have different ways they get the job done. And so we had one of our lefties going and we had two of our righty aces in the bullpen and another lefty that they hadn't seen yet. Um, you lead the league, at least in the postseason, in hits as well. So that kind of pressure to to have the opposing step pitching staff have to face that every night, even if you're only scoring one or you get shut out in the first game, 
there is that pressure that's constantly on the bases and a lot of traffic. What does that do to an opposing pitching staff? And how are you able to take advantage of that? Yeah, we just, our biggest thing is getting guys on base, getting pitchers into the stretch. Um, Cause then we can use our speed. We can, we can start putting pressure on the pitcher to hold the runners on. We get the infielders moving because somebody's stealing. Now they're out of position. A ball gets through the hole. We go first to third. And now you got runners on the corners. Um, so really just putting the ball in play and making teams make those plays in high level stress situations. Um, even, you know, if we don't get a hit, we're making them make the plays and we're running down the line at 110%, putting the pressure on every team to make a play. Um, Chris Dion has a 0.0 ERA this postseason. I'm like, yeah. Huh? <laughs> I, had to, I had to kind of double check that for a second because, I mean, he's, I know he's really good, but that, I mean, even for, for him, that must be a little bit shocking, but maybe not from your perspective because you're, you're with him every week. So, right. yeah. yeah what so, do you um, say about him? <laughs> Dion is actually in the 28 Metro West as well, and he's a pitcher there. He had 100 strikeouts in that league this year. Um, so we know exactly what we have out of him. We've been trying to get him on our team for a while because a lot of our guys do play in the 28th with him. And this year we, we were able to get him. Um, there was a little bit of conflict going into this weekend because they had their semifinal matchup on Sunday. And we had, you know, our 1-1 series against the Havoc. Luckily, the coach that runs the 28s is my old college coach. So I was able to, you know, work out a little deal with him to get Dion to come pitch with us Friday. And I knew once we got Dion to pitch Friday that we were going to win that game. We were going to be up 2-1 just because he's he's so good. He's so good in those pressure situations. I've faced him in other leagues in the playoffs, and I've watched him pitch in playoffs on on the bench. And, and you know, it's, it, it's something, you know, when he's out there, you know you have an opportunity to win the game every single time he touches the mound, no matter what team we play. Hmm. Yeah, and for those watching that don't know, I mean, he has a one – I was just, again, browsing for some research. His ERA in the postseason is 24 years, 1.81 and 151 strikeouts. I mean, you you you, you know that all too well, having to face yeah. him and obviously being his manager as well. So I'm sure that doesn't come as any surprise. No, no surprise at all. We knew, you know, he's a guy who doesn't walk many people. He's going to fill up the zone. He mixes up his pitches a lot. Um, he's not the hardest throwing guy, but the way he mixes up his pitches, sometimes that fastball gets up on you really quick and, and you're looking off speed and then you don't, you just don't have a shot to hit it. Um, is there any particular pitch that makes him so effective? Maybe a fastball, some kind of off speed pitch that would just devastate hitters? He's got a really good curveball, especially coming from the left side. You know, lefties are always funky to hit. Um, he, he's got a good curveball and, and he throws a good change up too. He's not afraid to go inside on a change up um, because he knows he can locate whatever pitch he wants at any time he wants. So, all right. Well, you're obviously your pitching staff isn't a one man show either because you can't rely on just one person to get this far mm -hmm. and to be that effective. Um, so, um, you have three arms that have a 1.65 ERA, 31 strikeouts, and five walks. Uh, during the postseason. So that's Dion, um, Nick Radcliffe, and Jonathan Matos as well. Um, what makes those three so effective? I mean, we've already talked about Dion, but in terms of Matos and Radcliffe, um, for those who don't watch you guys on a daily basis, why are they so effective and have those kind of insane numbers uh, being put up, especially yeah. this postseason? So normally in a series where we're not playing the Havoc, Radcliffe is probably just, a, you know, a bullpen guy. But we've done our research enough where we know that they, they've been struggling a lot with lefties this year. We have four lefties. So we rolled three of them out and, you know, they were able to do their jobs. Matos is a harder throwing lefty who has a really good curveball. And he's a guy that gets better as the game goes on. Um, he, I think last game, he let up nine hits in the first three or four innings. And then after that, he just absolutely rolled through. Um, and then Radcliffe's a guy who, who mixes up his pitches. He doesn't throw necessarily too hard. Um, but again, he's got two different curveballs he uses. He's got a change up and he, he does have a fastball at times. He can, you know, when he wants to rear back and throw it, he, he throws it pretty good. Um, 
what, what it all comes down to, they're, they're all gamers. You know, they want the ball in the big spots. Um, Matos was fighting to get the ball every night. And same thing with, with Dion's fighting the ball, get, get it every night. Radcliffe is ready to come out of the pen all the time. He's always asking to pitch. So um, with those three guys, it's, you know, they're gamers. And then we got our, we got our other righties, um, Justin Sylvia, Cam Baralt, and then we have a lefty, Drew Ferrazani. They're, everybody wants the ball. And, you know, when you have seven, eight pitchers that all want the ball at the same time, it's a tough decision to make. But I know, like, going with one of them, I'm perfectly fine with with rolling all of them out if I have to. And, you know, I, it's just, you know, trusting your pitchers and knowing that they're going to get the job done. Well, I mean, that's really good, too, especially, you know, as the postseason goes along, if you need to – call on somebody let's say someone's right. not having a the, their best night but you guys still have a dangerous offense you can bring somebody in and kind of change up you know um what the other team is looking at as well and see right. if you can you know change the momentum a little bit um to give your offense a chance to you know wake up depending on what type of game it is obviously but i'm sure that right. comes into effect sometimes too yeah, and it, it was actually good because we didn't use one relief pitcher at all this whole series. Every starter went the distance. So that makes it a lot easier on me where, you know, I, I don't have to make those tough managerial decisions. But, you know, I know that if if I have to, you know, we got guys in the pen that are ready to go and want the ball. Um, moving on to your next opponent, um, the South Shore Giants. So they've scored the most runs in the postseason so far have the second most hits, and have nine different players who have driven in runs the postseason. I mean, that's kind of almost sounds exactly like you guys, too. You know, you have a lot of depth. Um, you don't rely on a, on a couple players. You have a very diverse lineup, so do they as right. well. Um, what do your pitchers need to do to kind of help um, limit that and really put your offense in a position to win that maybe they've done already or maybe something they need to improve on? Um, based on what you've seen so far? Yeah, we just got to limit walks. I mean, I, I feel like when we do limit the walks, we have a great defensive team um, that, you know, we, we can make the plays that, that we need to. And, and there's plays that, you know, some of the times, some of the guys, you know, you don't expect to make and then, and then they make they make that play and it changes an inning, changes the game. So just keeping runners off base, not giving them free bases, making them work for everything, you know, that they get is is extremely extremely big and that's that's kind of our motto that we've been using throughout the season no team that we've played has seen our full lineup yet like our, our full starting lineup not one team has seen it um everybody's ready to go locked in we got the dates all ready to go for the playoffs so this is the first time that they're going to see our full lineup i'm not too sure if, if we've seen their full lineup but um you know i i like our chances against anybody um and, and i feel that because I think we're probably, I can go ahead and confidently say it, we're the closest team, like commodity rise, family wise. We do stuff outside of baseball. After games, we go out to dinner together. We have team parties during the year. We have a team golf tournament. Like we, we do things outside of baseball that, you know, you can't, you can't take that and just put a team together of good baseball players and, and get that chemistry. Um, you know, I, I, the biggest thing about sports is having a team chemistry, like knowing we have each other's back. Um, at a drop of a hat, if anything happened outside of baseball, every single person on this team would be there for somebody else. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing we got going for each other is because we have each other's backs outside of baseball. And that rolls into the, into the season when we're in tough spots. We know we got each other and we'll pick each other up. So I think, I think that's the biggest thing that we have going for us outside of our talent. And then, you know, obviously you talked about um, how close your team is and stuff like that. Um, for those, again, who aren't with you guys every day, are there any unsung heroes that people should pay attention to or, you know, don't get enough recognition? Because um, obviously, again, you guys have a very deep lineup, but, mm -hmm. you know, you can have here, you know, new heroes every day. So anyone in your lineup or, you know, pitching as well that um, people should be paying attention to? Yeah, I'd say the biggest one right now is Pat Yee. Um, you know, he's he's usually an outfielder for us. Our starting catcher wasn't at two games, and he's a lefty that had to go catch for two lefties that were throwing. So, you know, he's he's a guy where whatever you ask him to do, he's going to do. 
Um, we also have a couple of guys like that on the bench. There's, you know, guys who know their role. And I think that's the biggest thing to be in a successful team is everybody knowing their role, embracing their role, and just, you know, doing what they have to do to succeed in that role. Uh, we have a rotation of, of players. You know, if somebody's not there, somebody else is going to plug in. They may be out of position, but they're ready to go. Um, there's times where I'm going to be in the infield and we're going to have Yi, Chand, and, and Bolai in the outfield. And there's times where I'm going to be in the outfield and either Yi and Chand's going to, you know, take a back seat and, and be ready to come off the bench. So, I mean, we have a lot of guys that, you know, if they're not in the starting lineup, they're not hanging their heads and they're not mad about it. They're just ready for whenever their number does get called to step up and and do their job. And, you know, we're we're here to win championships. We're here to get rings. That's, you know, we want a champagne party after. That's 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 our ultimate goal. Uh, we done we did it once last year. We came up a little short and you know made us a very hungry team. Um, so, you know, it, it's championship baseball. It's you know you don't get much better than this. It's late September, early October baseball, and and that's what we live for. So you know if you want to come catch some good baseball, you know show up to the game.